Hello, hello everybody, so excited to be here. We're painting this super cute chicken stack tonight. If you can hear me, let me know in the comments. Just say hi, say who's here. I see Angie here. Hello, hi Ashley from Alabama. Who else do we have here? So excited for this one, it is so cute. Okay, can you guys hear me? Sound check, check, check. Lisa, hi, Lisa. All right, okay, so you can hear me, you can see me. Hi, Cindy, welcome, welcome. So my name is Luba Carlson, and I teach beginner-friendly paintings and art on this channel. Let's get to this. I'm sure everybody's excited. I I'm not going to sit and just chat, right? We're here to paint and work on this. So here are, <laughs> here is a reference. I had so much fun painting it. And for those of you who did not use the tracer and decided to just freehand it, we're going to freehand it super quick. I'm just going to make a sketch. Let me see. I see. I see. Ashley, Angie can hear me loud and clear. Diane, welcome. Welcome, Angela. Diane wants to make an Easter card. Ooh, that's fun. That is so, so fun. So these chickens are perfect and they're so easy to, um, to draw. So what I do first is I divide my paper kind of in half visually so like there is kind of an imaginary line right here in the middle okay and then we need to create a set of three chickens so the first one is kind of at an angle so i'm just going to give him an angle top right here and then the body is round just like a smile or with a watermelon even i just looked at it and i thought huh that looks like a watermelon so there is the body, okay, and the beak is pointed down, so there is the beak, and then, of course, we have the, uh, the crest and the tail and, you know, the wings and everything, and the feet, legs and feet. Here we are. Can you see this? Can you see what I'm doing? I hope you can see what I'm doing. There, oops. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, yeah, I think you can. Okay, well, the second chicken is right on top of the first one, right? So we are going to allow a little bit of space for his legs, and then we're going to eyeball the size, and then his shape is very much like an egg shape. So you just put in like a nice rounded oval here. And his legs are a little bit spread out because he's kind of sliding down the back of his friend. And his eyes are a different size, which is makes it makes it much easier. So he has one pretty big eye and then one eye that's a little bit smaller just to make him look funny. Right? And then the beak is like a diamond. And uh, here we are. And then, of course, those wings that we can add later on the crust. And then the last chicken sits on top of this one, but his feet are behind the crust, so we don't need to worry about that. And he is looking up at the sunflower, so his back is going to be pointed the other way. Go around. Here's his beak, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, Yes, and we'll also add the crust, the feathers, and everything else. But this is pretty much all we need here. And then for your sunflower, you can either eyeball it or you can just... 
Yeah, I, I figured you, most of you, um, it's super light, yes, but you can get the tracer. It's right under, right under the video. There is a link to the tracer if you need it. And for the sunflower, just find some round object, super easy. Trace your middle, you know, and then add another round object to help you put the petals where you want them. So you want three petals. I'm just marking three spots. One, two, three. And I'm going to start here and just make a couple of petals that would work for me. Just like that. And then the uh, stem goes into there. And then, of course, we have some leaves. You can make them bigger. You can make them those are, those are all the choices. You can make them bigger. You can make them smaller. It's, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I'm working on acrylic paper, which is why um, I'm using a needed eraser to remove the pencil lines that I really do not want to have here. Since the painting is super light, right, I don't want any extra pencil marks on anything so that I don't need to fight with them later. I know what goes where and we can just start. All right. Now, if you have any questions, pop, pop them in the comments. Um, let me know how it's going. Let's see. Yeah, Angie, again, go ahead and uh, click on the link below. It'll take you to my website, to the blog post with the tracer for for this painting. It will show you what uh, you will be able to see where the lines are much better on that one. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to use flat brushes and round brushes. Yeah. So always adjust the size of your brush according to the size of the surface you're working on, right? So if you're going to use, if you're thinking about using a large, like 16, uh, not yes, I think it's a size 16, like one inch flat brush, this is, this can be a little bit too big, right? So maybe go with something smaller. Figure out what works for you for the size that you're working on. If you're working on a 16 by 20, it makes sense to use a one inch brush for your background, right? So just kind of look at that, see, see what works, okay? Let's create a light, super light wash for the background. And here we are. This is just for the wash because I do not want it runny. I don't want it runny all over the place. So I'm going to use a good amount of white. And uh, you can use uh, phthalo blue or sky blue for your background. You can use a little bit of phthalo green if, if you would like to add a little bit of like turquoise to that. So I'm going to drop a, a little bit of uh, phthalo green in here, and I'm going to mix just to make sure I'm getting to the color that I want. This is a little bit too green right now. I want it a little bit bluer. and lighter. So let's let's do lighter first. Just mix your sky background. Whatever you want to use, you can use whatever colors you like. There is no right or wrong. This is your painting. I am here just showing step by step. Whatever colors you choose to use, it's, it's up to you, right? Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of sky, no, phthalo blue. On the side, come on. This, this is too much. I just need a tiny drop. 
I think I'm going to bring this to bluer. So I'm going to bluer. Here we go. Okay, I like that. I like what I'm seeing. Now I want to make it a wash. And to make this a wash, I will add some water to this right after I clean up my little palette knife here. Okay, so I really like to use my spray bottle to add water to paint because it's a lot easier than when you go back and forth and have to carry it back and forth. Okay. Um, okay, so um, I am checking on the comments once in a while. I'm looking back to make sure that questions being answered. Okay. So, yes, grab your flat brush of your choice, put it in the water, make it wet, and then squeeze it on the side. Get access of water out and then get into that wash that you created. You really want this runny. This is not runny enough. I'm going to add more. Add a little bit more water to this. There we go. Yes. Okay. And then what I haven't told you, uh, we did not put the uh, horizon line anywhere. We don't have it. Okay. So there's a few ways you can do that. You can just paint it and then deal with that. You can use maybe a piece of uh, printer paper or, you know, whatever. Like maybe you have a scrap of something. So like I have something that um, I put just down like this and then paint over it to have my line. Yeah. Or you could use, uh, what's it called? Office tape. Just regular office tape, magic tape, just like that. Just pull it. But you want to take some of this tack off, so I just stick it to my pants usually, so that some of the glue comes off so that it would be easy to remove it. And then I place it right under the yellow chicken's wings. That's where I kind of wanted my line. And just lightly press. And this will allow me to have very nice and clean horizon line. And I'm just going to go straight ahead and paint my, my background. I know where my pencil marks are. Now, if you started painting and you're like, I cannot see my tracer anymore, then that means that you need to water down your paint a little bit more. So if you're painting like in canvas, you can probably use a wet wipe or a baby wipe to wipe that off and add some more water to your paint so that it's more a wash, okay? More like a wash so that you really can um, see your lines if you need them. So just make sure that this whole space is covered. Sometimes there is a stubborn part that you can't see through that doesn't want you to be that doesn't want to be painted. So that makes sense to just okay. So now this is my light blue background, and I'm gonna rinse out my brush. And then I'm going to just go and I think I'm just going to add some lemon yellow directly to this wash it'll probably make a little bit different green it will be much brighter than that i think but i think it'll work so while the sky is drying i'm going to mix color for my grass background so just squeeze some lemon yellow grab my palette knife and uh, usually it takes a lot of yellow and not so much blue to create green. So I'm going to go with this yellow and I'm just going to bring, start bringing the, the bluish wash until I get to the 
shade of green that I like. So this is getting me to super bright chartreuse. I like that. Very nice. By adding more blue, you're making it greener, kind of darker, you fear. Kind of green. You can also always just mix your any yellow with any blue and play with that kind of greens. Sometimes those greens do not come out super bright because we're using like different uh, pigments and different yellows and different blues. But it's still fun to play with. So if you're in the mood, someday try and mix your yellows and blues and see where this can get you. Okay? So this looks good. I'm going to wet down my palette knife. Let me see what's going on in the comment section. Ashley said this is going to be adorable. Beatrice says, where can I find the sketches? Sketches are right under the video in the description. It says, I think it says patterns and materials or something like that are available here. And then there's a link to my blog. And that's where, oh, my website. That's where they all are. Okay. Now, check if your background is dry. If it's not dry, you can use a blow dryer or like um, heating tool, drying tool, whatever you have. You can maybe even use like a little hand fan or just like use a piece of paper and just, you know, wave it over. Okay, I have a little heating tool, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. Okay, it might get a little too crazy. Whoopsie, that was my dog that was dropping her toy. Okay. All right. And really, we just need this line dry over here where the sky meets the grass. Okay. Everything else is not... Lost all your lines. Oh, no. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Because I almost lost all my lines. Also, we'll just freehand that you'll be okay. So, what are we doing here? Here's what we're doing. I'm getting to that tape that's marking my line. Just carefully peel it off. And now I'm going to reset it to match the line here. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to paint my grass background. Also make sure that it's uh, super washed so that you can still see your lines. But also look, if even if you lost your lines, these chickens, they're so, so easy. You, could, you can do this without the tracer, trust me. It's really not, not that complicated, okay? Because you're painting. If like when you're drawing, it's a little bit harder to draw. But when with paint, it's easier to make shapes. And this is just a set of shapes, nothing else. Okay. So again, I'm going left and right, putting horizontal strokes to make my grass super bright. Oh, look at that yummy color. It is so bright. All right. Okay, rinse your brush. And remove that that uh, tape if you have it. Just take it off. You don't want it to stick to your paint too bad. So like remove it as soon as you can. Be aware that this is super wet, so like don't rub it on your clothes or anything. Just put it in trash. Obviously, why would you rub it on your clothes, right? That's kind of that's an interesting concept. Why? 
Okay. So, so far, so good. Yeah? Okay, let's have just clean, clean white. And um, you're going to want to use a smaller, a smaller flat like this. I don't know what size this is. Makes me think it's an eight. I don't know. It's really not big at all, right? The size of it. Okay, so I like to use that. And some people find it easier to use a round brush, but I noticed that it's it can be difficult to control what's going on with the round brush. So we're going to white out our sunflower and then chickens. Like we're gonna get some color into them later. But first we're going to paint them white. So put some white, just straight white on your paintbrush, and then go up there trace that circle or just paint the circle if the lines are gone and uh, just make it white then go back get into your um, uh, petals we want those petals white and we're doing this because the sky is blue right and so if we just paint right on top of blue with our yellow, what is going to happen? This is just going to go and get green just like the grasses, right? It's not quite the color that we want for the sunflower. So we're going to try and do our best and block this gorgeous blue from our fabulous sunflower. I know, I'm kind of funny with words today. I don't know what happened. I'm just going to do that. Boom. And here, here we are. Okay, and uh, the third one right here. Try not to put too much paint on it, just spread it out nicely. We're still going to see a little bit of blue shining through it. It's okay. It's all good. All right. Okay. So my next step is this. Oh my goodness. I have a net on my painting. Okay. So let's do this guy up here. Let's paint him white. So you can pretty much paint like almost a crooked smile and put the line down and there you have it. Okay. That's all we need for that chicken. There we go. Just the main shape, it's over painting for him right now. Then we'll need to switch brushes to do the rest of it, okay? Now we paint the main shape of the yellow chicken, which is like the egg shape. I think he's right here. I really want to make him a little bit wider on the bottom. So he might come out more stout than the other one, but that's okay. He's still cute. Right here. And 
the last chicken. Here's the back, like a slide. And then around the tummy, the body. So we pretty much have like two slices of watermelon and an egg shapes. All right, here we are. This needs to dry. Okay, so this is good. I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm going to switch to a medium, medium, to small, medium to small round brush. Always, always rinse your brushes. If you treat your brushes well, they will serve you a very long time. Okay. Linda says, I love this style. Oh. Angie says, I have yellow oxide and King's gold. Oh, those are pretty colors. See what happens. Okay. So let's. So um, here's the difference between the two. So this is the small round and this is the medium round brush. What I want you to do first is to test on your palette or scrap piece of paper, whatever you have. So wet your medium brush. Okay, my dog is not being helpful. Uh -uh. She really likes to drop her noisy toys on the areas that are not carpeted, and that makes a lot of noise. Okay, so take your medium size round brush Whatever color you want right now, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go with this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. And to create the crust and the tail, all you need to do is to like push the brush down like this and then lift. Okay. So you're going to push it down and turn and lift. And you kind of drag it. So it's really is a good idea. It really is a good idea to practice this and do it with the medium size brush. Okay. And then do the same with your small round brush. So here I'm doing the same. Down and drag and lift. Down and kind of curve and lift. Okay, and so now I can see which size would work better for the size of my chickens. So if your chickens are much bigger than mine, then probably medium round brush would be better. But I think that for what I have here, I might want to do a medium size on the tail, but a, a small brush on the uh, the head crust or whatever that's called, and the uh, wings later. Okay, so let's do the tail first. Tails first. I'm gonna do the, and it's just two because the chicken in the middle does not get one. So should get some white. Pick a spot for the one that goes in the middle first. I want it up here. Press the brush. Drag down and slowly lift and bring it to the back of the chicken. And then you're going to add the next feather right next to it, but a little bit lower. Press down, drag, lift, turn. Refill your brush and again. Press down, drag, lift, turn. And here we are. 
and then the chicken on the bottom her tail see it's kind of pointing the other direction to make that easier i will just turn my painting surface okay and this way i can see better what i'm doing so i'm going to be up here press down bring it to the back and again down bring it to the back and the last again down bring it to the back i'm going to clean my brush and i'm going to switch to the smaller to the small brush small round now turn it the right way and we're going to add the crust So the crest, uh, let's do the beak first so that it's easier to see the um, where things go. Okay, so that's the beak. Um, I gotta anchor my hand because the beak is coming not straight, I don't like that. There we go, like that, and like that. And you can always fix it a little bit. Don't worry about it too much because everything is going to be outlined with the black, uh, black paint later. Okay. And so th there is the beak. So the beak meets the head and you want to step out a little bit for the forehead. So the, uh, the eye is going to be somewhere there. So there is the crest, and we're going to do it the same way, push it down, bring it to the spot, and lift, and do it again. Push it down to the spot, and lift, and last one, down to the spot, and lift. Okay. The yellow chicken, the chicken in the middle, doing the same way with just the crest. And it kind of overlaps with the with the blue chicken, but that's okay. You can do this as funny as you like. You can add like a funny twirl to it, like this dude is getting a funny twirl. Why not? Okay, and then the wings, we still need to do this because there's still different colors. So we want to make sure that we block the blue so that it does not turn green or something. Okay. Wing, wing, and wing. Okay. And the chicken, chicken on the bottom. Here's her beak. All right. And then we're going to step us uh, for this girl over here. Her crust is right where the beak meets the head. I don't know if you see it here on the side, I'm kind of pointing to it. So that's what we're gonna do. Bring it to where the beak means her head. And here's the other one. And here's the other one. Okay, rinse, rinse, rinse. Okay, back to your flat brush. Let me see. Let me see. People are talking. Liner brush. Uh, yes, Angie. Liner brush, probably. Or, or just a small round brush. 
Liner brush might not do that though. I don't know, it depends on if it's a real liner brush or if it's a round brush that they call a round a liner brush. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just gonna do this super quick. Okay, so this is a number one liner and this is a number one round. What? Sorry. There, so if you put them right next to each other, you will see that liner brush has longer bristles but they're not really that much longer, but they're still longer. And the brush is shaped differently, so it might create a different print or different uh, stroke for you, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put some raw sienna on our palettes. Raw sienna, just a little bit. You're not gonna need a lot. I'm going to add some lemon yellow because we've used it up with the green. And I'm going to add some uh, primary yellow. Also, don't need a whole lot, just some. Okay. And uh, Let's paint the center of the sunflower. Let's paint the primary yellow. Just the best way we can. Okay, we'll have to come back and add another layer and that's all right. Just the primary yellow. Rinse your brush. And then we will start painting. We're starting painting the petals of the sunflower with lemon yellow. It's also called uh, chrome yellow, cool yellow. But yeah, I just call it lemon yellow. There we go. So, yes, all three petals we're going to paint lemon yellow. Still using a small flat brush. It may prove to be challenging a little bit, but just kind of turn it around and use the side of the brush to get into tiny spaces, and you will see that once you get the hang of it, it works better than a round brush. There goes the petal number three. Okay, do not rinse this brush. Just wipe it off on the paper towel. Grab a good amount of that primary yellow. Put a second coat in the center. Okay. And then we're going to add some shading for to, to the leaves. That goes, you don't want a whole lot of paint, just enough, okay? And uh, let's start with the middle because it's like it shows the best. You're going to put some paint closer to the sunflower center, just adding strokes like this. And then you will um, kind of blend it in just on one side. So I chose to blend it in on the left side. So here is a close up and if you get super close, then you can see where the warmer yellow is and where the cooler yellow is. 
and then we're going to repeat the same way. Repeat the same way at the base and then around to the side. And again at the base and then around to the side. It's okay if some color still shows through. It's all good. Wipe off on the paper towel. Take some of that um, raw sienna. Raw sienna. And just paint the center. Just one coat of raw sienna. Let's clean that brush. And next we're going to paint the chickens. So the top chicken is blue. You can add some phthalo blue to your white. Or you can use any other blue, whatever makes you happy. I really like the blue that Phthalo blue and white make together. Just such a pretty color. Or you can use phthalo green and add a little bit more blue to that. Whatever works for you is good. I am painting right over the crust that we just so carefully put in there. I guess it will be fine. Okay, so we have that, just one coat. And if your coat didn't cover it very well, let it dry and then come back and add another coat. Now let's paint the chicken. And the chicken is um, poor sienna. And uh, what I like, what I did with this one, I painted it the same way I painted the center of the sunflower. So first, paint the chicken with your primary yellow over the wings and everything. Okay. Now I'm going to let this dry and work on the last chicken and then go back and finish the one in the middle. This can dry. And this girl, she gets a little bit of magenta first. And I feel like when I put a magenta in the back of a bright yellow, of a bright red color. I think it makes my red color pop much more. It just looks better. Here we are. Okay, just paint this in. Okay, now I'm going to let this magenta dry. I'll just sit there and dry, and I'm going back for raw sienna, and I'm going to paint the chicken 
with that. And so he kind of gets this really cool color. Okay. And dry. I mean, uh, wash the brush. Okay, let me see if I have any questions. Okay, looks like no questions. That's good. Let me know how everybody's doing. I'm going to switch my brush to the round one and paint the beak of the blue chicken and then the beak of the red chicken. So the blue chicken has an orange beak, so I will take a little bit of magenta, like literally a tiny, 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 tiny amount. I don't know if you can see how just on the tip of the brush, okay? Just a little bit. And slowly incorporate it into a very small amount of lemon yellow. And it will give me this nice orange that it's pretty good. I think I'm going to need a little bit more so that I have some color to work with. There we go. Or you can use some other color. Maybe you have orange in a bottle that you would rather use. Okay. You just need a little bit. It's just for the beak. So that goes here. And I'm putting it on and I'm seeing that it's not very orange. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going to just have a little bit more magenta and just add it directly to his beak. And just paint it this way, see? And it did it. Just, it's just the right amount to turn it orange. All right, and the red chicken has a yellow beak, so that is lemon yellow. Just paint it, and that might need another coat, and that's okay. So what we're doing here, we're pretty much hopping, right, from one area to the other, just to, to allow one area to dry and while it's drying, we're working on the next piece. Okay, so they're drying. Let's put some seeds on the uh, sunflower. Just flip your small brush over and use the wrong side Dip it in your raw sienna and just add a number of different dots. You just want to put one, two, three, four, and then maybe reload the wrong side of the brush so that your dots are all different size. You kind of want to get a good fill. You want them to fill up the um, the sunflower center. Okay. All right. A little slower. Okay. And Diane says, I love how you shape everything. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's slow down a little bit if it helps.
Okay. For the like, if you feel that I'm going way too fast, just keep an eye on your screen and like keep an eye on what's happening, but do your own thing. And then when this is done, uh, replay will be available right away on YouTube. Maybe like they'll take, I don't know, 10 minutes or something to, to get it in, right? So replay will be available. Don't worry if you can't keep up. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah, it is hard to follow when I'm mixing colors because it's very... <sighs> It's intuitive in a way, right? But the more you do it, the easier it gets. There is science to it, and uh, it's just too much to learn. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Can I just spray this with water a little bit? It's drying. Okay, where are we at? Okay, so let's do this next. Every chicken has a pink kind of crest. And that pink is nothing else but magenta mixed with white. So I'm taking some magenta, putting it into the white area and Mix it and I'm thinking that's probably too pale because I want a good amount of paint so that I can create those crusts. So I'm going to add a little bit more magenta. Here we go. Maybe even a little bit more. And the more. Oh, wow. That's taking a lot of magenta. There we go. Okay. So mix, as you're mixing your colors, mix to your liking. Mix because most likely your colors are not going to look like my colors because I seriously doubt that uh, you have access to exactly the same paint that I'm using, right? Because I'm using paint that I buy for my studio. And so I buy it by a gallon or well, half a gallon or something from a wholesale. And so I cannot match it to, um, you know, to craft paints. And I seriously believe that all you need, I think, is just a set of 12, I think. I'm trying to count, but yeah, it's all there. It's on the website. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just adding the pink to the crests and by the same way we did the, the white, just push it down, follow, follow the lines that you've created with white and then just let go. Okay. Try not to overwork it too much. Like you want to still see the lines for it. In violet bird, is that a different color, like a lighter? Violet bird. Which one is violet? Okay. So we have a blue one, we have a yellow, and we have a red. So this one, the background on it, this is still magenta. We haven't put the bright red on it yet. We're working on crusts while this is drying. Okay, this crust here to the middle and up. This crust here to same way as we did before and again the same way as we did before just kind of connect them so that they are together 
I think the middle one needs a little bit more. So a little bit more paint in it. So I'm just going to go back and fix it. So that spread there we go just a little bit more paint to this okay here we go all right the last one for the red chicken Oops. this yeah. Here's that. I'm cheating a little bit. I do not want to refill my brush. Okay. Then let's put the nice red color on the red chicken. Where is it? We're going to use the flat, small flat. Or I am going to use a small flat, and you can use what works for you. Just get some of that true red, bright red, whatever it is that you have. Wipe off your brush, make sure that you don't have water on it. And just paint it bright red. Here we go. Okay, clean this brush. And then we will flip this brush over and add the dots. We'll add the dots to the crusts right here. So you see how on the top there's four dots, three dots, however many you want to fit. And you do that by flipping your brush over and we're gonna dip it in red and then go to the crust and then just put your dot in and again and it if you want your dots the same size it makes sense to refill your uh the other wrong side every time so you put the dot and then you refill if you do not care you probably can put three or four dots at, like consequently but they will be going like uh, smaller and smaller in size so that depends on what what you want okay so that kind of takes a little bit of time Okay, and then this one too. Yes, Angie, top side of the brush. 
top side of the brush, not the brush itself, the wrong side for dots. Okay, for the eyes, <laughs> we can either use, you can get a larger brush and just use, again, the wrong side and create the eyes and then just work around them. Or you can paint them with your small round brush, whichever works for you. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do it with the wrong side of the brush for, um, let me see, for the red and the yellow one. And then I will brush it with just with the small brush for the blue, for the blue chicken. Okay. So uh, depending on the brush, right, the size of the wrong side is going to be bigger or smaller. So I am going to use these two. They're two different sizes for the eyes for the yellow chicken. So I'm going to just dip it in the white. Put the dot on there, okay? And then get the smaller brush and put the dot here. So those dots are really, really small, right? But they gave us enough paint and enough base to work with. So now we can go in with the um, small round brush and make those eyes just the way we want them. So you just kind of spread it out. You can make them a little bit more oval or rounded, whatever works. There's one eye. Just kind of carefully spread out the paint. Different size eyes. <laughs> okay. And now this other chicken, the red chicken. You can also do a dot, and then you can use your brush to just move the dot around and increase the size of the dot to make the eye. Yeah? Blue chicken, there's your dot, and then you kind of can move it up and down a little bit from side to side, up and down to make it more oval. And then that's an eye that we're going to. Okay, let's work on tail feathers. Those are medium round brush, tail feathers and wings. So the blue chicken has dark blue tail feathers. That's pretty much straight phthalo blue that I used on that. And that's what I'm going to do. Just fill my brush with phthalo blue and just fill that in. And then from here, then you can always come back and like when there is, if there is some areas that light shows through, you can always come back and fix that. Okay, switch to the small round, small round, doing the wings, 
first wing in the middle. Push, drag, stop. And then here, second feather. And the third feather. And then swings, swings both brushes. It's all like small detail work now. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Okay. For the yellow chicken, so he needs um, he needs his beak, which is bright red. So I'm just going to start with that with a small round brush. I'm just going to paint that. I lost all my lines too, so just gonna start with like turn up nose and then turn it into a kite kind of shape. So it's not a diamond, it's more like a kite. Okay, let this dry in your brush. And for the wings, I use the mix of white and raw sienna. You can do something else. But I'm just going to have some raw sienna and mix it with white. Make some of that light beige color for the wings. And then just go ahead and paint them. I wanted them a little bit different from the base color so that they will show but not too different because if the chicken is kind of brown or yellow right it would be weird to have a chicken with red wings or something like that i don't know i just thought it was good okay and now the red chicken has wings, and his wings are all, or her wings, are black. So let's have some, whoa, I did not expect that to go so bad. That's a lot of black on that. I don't think I'm going to need all of that. But, you know, let's just paint those two feathers. Oh, I think I'm using the wrong side size. I definitely am. I'm supposed to be using the medium round brush for this. There you go. Big difference. Okay. I have here. There's a funny tail. I picked up some white on it, so I'm brushing this off. I'm going to turn this 90 degrees to put the wings in. So middle wing, middle feather, side feather, and then the other side. Just like this, and then connect them. Okay, clean the black off. Chickens need to dry just a little bit. Let's make the stem for the sunflower. And for that, we'll be mixing our phthalo blue right here with lemon yellow right here. Phthalo blue and lemon yellow, and it should make this very intense, very nice green. Okay, so you might want to water it down just a little bit if yours is as thick as mine, so that it will glide as you paint your stem. Okay, so just start on the top and drag down, or bottom go top, whichever way. Doesn't matter. Thank you. 
That's the stem. It's pretty big. It's okay. We'll be adding shading to it. And uh, for the leaves, I like to add more phthalo blue to the green that we already have to make those leaves even darker green than the stem. So super dark. There you go. Uh, find where your leaves are. Just draw like a tear shape and fill it in. And let's add another. And I somehow penciled them right here, those leaves. So that's, and still see that pencil marks. So that's what I'm going to use. It's okay. Oh boy, I'm dropping paint. Clean up an aisle five. Add one more, like a small leaf, maybe on, on the bottom. That's fine. Whatever works. Okay, so this needs to dry. Let me see what's happening. What color are the leaves? They are the same green that we used for the stem except for I added some more blue to them, so they're darker than the stem. They're darker green than the stem. Okay. Yep, just told you the color of the leaves. They look super dark. Like I look at my screen, what it shows to you, it seems super dark, but they're really not that dark on my side. See, they're green. Just dark green. Okay. Got it? All right. All right. Okay, chickens need some seed on the ground. So I'm still with the same small round brush and I'm gonna use the wrong side of it right now and add some raw sienna seed right in front of the chicken that's facing the ground. That's what the chicken wants. She wants the seeds. So just put some seeds on there. Let me see. I see questions. Oh, the stem. Okay. Okay. So let's let's uh pause just for a couple of minutes. So the stem is dark green, and I made it by mixing phthalo blue and uh, lemon yellow. Phthalo blue and lemon yellow. Pretty much same amounts of both. And that gives you a nice dark 
leafy, kind of spinachy almost, or like kale-ish green. And then uh, after that, for the leaves, I just grab a scoop of the same phthalo blue and put it in the same mix, and that's how I made the leaves. Okay. Got it? You're very welcome, Lisa. You're very welcome. I get it. Okay. Super easy step. Okay, we're just going to add black dots <laughs> to places and things. So again, wrong side in the black paint, and then add a few black seeds into your sunflower. You do not want to overwhelm it. Don't put too many, just a few, okay? And then some of those blue black seeds for the chicken to eat. Okay. Then we're gonna add a pupil for the eye. So the uh, blue chicken is looking at the sunflower, so the pupil goes in the front and kind of in the middle of the eye, right there. So that it's looking at the sunflower. The funny chicken in the middle, his pupils are kind of cross, he's kind of cross-eyed a little bit. So we're going to put down on two sides and then of course the hungry chicken is looking at the seeds she's eating so that's going to be looking down At this point, your leaves may be drying and you may, might notice that they, uh, they're not covered very well. It might have happened. So it did happen to mine. So I'm just adding a second coat of the dark green. And I completely messed up the lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my baby wipe and just clean this up a little bit that's okay it just happens not a big deal just kind of look at your painting and decide if you need a second coat
Okay. Let's see who's saying what. Angie said thank you. Angie, what color eyes? Middle chicken somehow I missed. They're all white. They're all white eyes with black pupils in them. Okay. All right. So we are going to start outlining everything with black paint. So I recommend using either a liner brush or just a small round brush that we've been using all this time. This is what I'm using, the same small round brush. And uh, I'm going to start with my sunflower. And because I do not want to touch anything that's wet, there's a whole lot of wet stuff out here, right? I'm going to flip this upside down so that it's easier to outline. All right. So let's start with the sunflower, just black paint. Um, round brush um if you like you start outlining and you feel that your paint is chunky and it's not moving it means that you need to add water to your paint okay i like my paint at ice cream consistency for this so this is too thick what i have right now i don't know if you can see this here closer to the camera this is too thick okay so i'm just gonna bring some water to here and mix in some good amount of water so that I have melted ice cream so that it's it's runny, okay? A little bit runny, not like watery, watery, but a little bit runny. Okay, I think this is good. So if you ended up with a messy brush, clean it up before you start outlining so that you don't get blobs of color. Just put the tip of your brush, just the bristles in your paint. Do not push on your brush too hard as you outline. And I'm gonna start with the petals from the outside in. Outside, just around the petal and bring it to the sunflower and stuff. And then here, and I'm not gonna finish it because this is tape over here, so it doesn't make sense to continue. And I'm gonna go and grab this petal. Go slow, don't rush. Your line is not supposed to be exactly the same thickness in every spot. There's going to be some variation and it's okay because it's hand painted, yeah? So this uh, middle petal obviously overlaps this petal here, so I'm just going to start and go this way and uh, see where it takes me. Yeah, just like that. And then add your petal. And then add the piece over here that connects the petal to the center. And now we can do the center. Boom. For the stem, we just want to add one line closer to the edge of your canvas. So if your canvas is placed the right side up, the black line will go on the left side of your stem. Okay? And we will hop over the leaves. 
So on the left side of my stem, there goes my black line. Stop by the leaf, hop over, over here it has it. Hop over and all the way down. And now that we have that line, we can outline the leaves. Just go around and bring it in. So if you cannot make a line like two inches long without having to refill your brush, probably you need to add water to your paint. Because you should be able to go around the whole leaf in one motion without refilling. Now, it's hard to control the motion, right? But it should be, it should hold enough paint for you. On sunflower, Angie, I'm starting outside in, left side of the stem. Petals outside in, the stem left side. Okay, chickens. They are still kind of wet, so keep that in mind. I start with the beak and I'll start with the top one. So see how like just turn it around so that that's easier for you. And do not push your brush too hard down. Just do your outline. Super light. So for the crest, I outline the one, the feather in the middle, or it's not the feather, sorry. For the crest, I do the uh, uh, middle first. My brush separated and made a mess. Okay, which tells me clean your brush and then refill again. Bring it together. Get the bristles in, and then do, then, and then refill with paint, and then paint. Okay, there you go, the upside down mouth over here doesn't have to be, you can make it a smiley, I just thought that's kind of funny, how focused he is on, on the sunflower. Obviously, hop over the crest over here. And then outline your um, wing. And the other one, and this here. And then the tail also start in the middle to do the middle one first. And then outline the sides. Okay. 
Okay, and then clean up your brush. Make sure that you have paint only on the tip and paint around that eye. Just outline, super careful. Okay, moving on to the yellow chicken. So for this boy, or girl really, doesn't matter, I'm going to do the eyes first so that I can reach. Okay, and clean up my brush, refill, make sure that it's not separating, and then super careful. Go around the beak, because it's super tiny. Okay. And then on the inside of the beak, it goes down like this. Okay. And then I will do the crest. And I picked up some pink because it didn't dry completely, but it's okay. And the other side. Okay, the wings, the center first. And the other wing also is on the first. Okay. Turn him the right side in. Okay, so um it shows over here, so here's um, the blue chicken that I have. There is enough space to put his feet in, so that's what I'm going to do. Because that's just perfect. Right here. Because it's right on top of him. And we can actually see his fit, feet. That's different from the, <laughs> from the other one, but I think it's, it's funny a little bit. Oh, there is these. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's not a live but Luba if she didn't sneeze. Okay. And okay, all the way around this dude. From wing to wing. And then all the way around on the other side. On the bottom. There we go. Okay, red chicken. Here we go again, right? The middle of the grass. And sides. Okay, super light touch on the beak. Around the 
other eye. The back. And the uh, tails are already black, so that's don't need to do anything with that, tail feathers. And so here we are. Okay. And yes, this one needs his legs. Now this one needs legs. Okay, get in there, we're getting there. So we can rinse out the black brush and then the rest is going to be done with the white. You want to really clean this brush really well because we're going to need this brush for white. Clean, nice white. Okay. Let's see what's happening. Okay. All right. Let's add highlights to the tails. So the thing with that, these... This shape over here for the highlight, how you do it is you make a dot, just like we did all the dots, but you make a dot and then you drag it down and then it will make this shape. And so you make a dot, you drag, and you, then you do dot, 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 drag, dot, dot, okay? So let's do all of those first. Let's split that brush over. So there is a dot, drag, and then the other dot, drag. And one more right here. And then add the dots, like whatever fits. Like I'm not gonna fit two in the center, but I can fit two on the side dot dot and then it's a dragon dot for his wings drag and dot okay now we're looking at the yellow chicken and it's dragon dot for the wings also drag and dot and uh, dot and drag sorry dot and just pull it dot, pull, dot, and pull, and again, and one more time, and then it's I, the same for the tail, as for the blue one, for the black tail, it's the same thing, start in the middle first, Dot, 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 pull, dot, ah, refill, dot, dot, and the bottom feather, dot, pull, and the dot, and then we're going to go ahead and add the same thing we did for the blue wings. We're doing the same thing for the black wings. Okay. And now highlights. Highlights and we're done. Okay. So first highlight. Just white paint on your round brush, on your small round brush. Just fill it up very good. 
So the first highlight goes on in the center of your sunflower, just kind of like a smile. Okay, then it goes on the center petal on the opposite of your shading. So remember how we added shading on this side here. You're going to add a highlight on the other side. And then for this petal here on the right side, and then this petal right here. Then the highlight goes on the opposite side from the black on the stem. So here's the stem, the black is on the left. So the highlight goes on the right side of the stem. Doesn't have to be anything hard. Yeah, just kind of hop over the leaves, hop over, and then there is a spot here and here. And then we're going to add two highlights. It's like a broken line highlight for each leaf on the top on the right. So it goes one, two. And then I use the wrong side of my brush and add a dot in the middle. Okay, again on the right side, one, two, and a dot. For this one, maybe even three. This is a big leaf. One, two, and three. And then I add dots in between. And then this leaf gets to one, two, and the dot. Maybe more paint on this one. Okay. And then we're going to add highlight broken line to the top of his of the blue chicken okay so just a broken line right here and a rounded on the tummy also broken then we're going to add lights on okay so in my uh, reference it's on the left side but we can put it on the right side because we've been putting on the, all the light on the right side so it makes sense so add it to the right side round the side and side and then the red chicken also gets a broken line just like the blue one down the chest and the tummy Yeah. And so now you sign it and you probably display it. That's that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you had fun. It sounded like it was a little bit more challenging, right, than we anticipated. But I think this is this is a good one and like you can always use this kind of painting to create cards to just like doodle paint right it's just oh tape's not tape's not wanting to move even though i did attach it to my pants there we go let's just take it all off so that we can see the finished project, right? Finished painting. What happened here? Let's see. There we go. Ta da! So there is one, there is another. They are a little bit different, but they are the same. <laughs> I don't know which middle chicken is crazier, this one or that one. I think they're both quite funny. All right. So 
Not too challenging, just lost you a few times with color mixes. Okay, that's good to know. This tutorial was amazing. Thank you so much for doing this. Fell behind a few of the steps, but I'm not too far behind you. Ooh, ooh. Good job, Ashley. Good job, Lisa. Good job, Cindy. All right, so um, yeah, I guess this is it. And I'll see you for some other painting. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, there is a link right under this video. Buy me a coffee. Um, dot com slash Luba Carlson. And I guess I'll see you some next time with something new. All right. Play with your mixing colors. It's fun. Okay. Bye.